you. Thank you. Now, let's get more on the news that the former Bosnian Serb commander Ratko Mladic is to make his first appearance before the War Crimes Tribunal at The Hague on Friday. Uh, let's get more from our Europe correspondent, Matt Cole. He's in The Hague uh, for us now. And Matt, are we clear how this is going to unfold in terms of the number of charges that will be laid against him? Uh, still not exactly clear, uh, not least because there are still discussions ongoing between the prosecutors about how to tackle the, the sheer number of issues that he faces. War crimes, genocide, crimes against humanity, not least, of course, that massacre in 1995 in Srebrenica of some 8,000 Muslim men and boys. So there are discussions, we understand, ongoing as to whether perhaps they would separate some of the charges out in the same way, for example, that Saddam Hussein faced individual trials in Iraq rather than one big mass war crimes trial. So that's still a possibility under consideration. Certainly prosecutors say here they want to keep it as tight and, uh, uh, and brief as possible uh, rather than letting it run on and on for years as many of these have want to do. Although exactly how they'll prevent that happening they haven't been able to make clear. Uh, and Matt, just, I suppose this is the equivalent in UK terms of a, a remand hearing. There's not going to be any start of the trial yet. That's going to come some months down the line. Oh, months, if not more, indeed, John. As things stand, uh, at 10 o'clock local time, 9 o'clock UK time on Friday, uh, Ratko Mladic will appear for the first time in the court behind me to face whatever indictment is finalised to be put before him. Uh, however, his defence team has not yet been chosen, so while prosecutors have had 15 or 16 years to decide what they want to accuse him of, his defence team will now need to be chosen and then have many, many months or longer to decide how, if they can, defend him, that they will. Uh, and then, of course, once that trial does start, it could possibly run on for years before it comes to any kind of conclusion. And have they kind of... Uh, I'm sure they have considered the mechanisms of that so that you would avoid what happened with Slobodan Milosevic, where it went went on for a very long time and he died before justice was delivered. Indeed, uh, he died from heart problems in the detention centre here in The Hague uh, without any resolution to his trial. Uh, the problem they have is that there are a number of uh, delaying tactics which have been used by other people before this court. Uh, Radovan Karadic, for example, arguing long and hard that he didn't recognise the legitimacy of the people here to try him. Uh, and uh, there are, of course, delays for health. Uh, Milosevic had three-month delays at times because of his genuine health concerns. And so... Uh, there are many ways of stalling this process, legitimate and otherwise, that uh, could cause them problems. The, the tribunal here is only funded at the moment until 2014 uh, by international support. Uh, there were questions this morning, will that now have to be extended? Can they really see this being dealt with sooner? And the answer was, we don't know. It's simply too early to say. Certainly Radovan Karadic's trial, which has similar uh, uh, tones to this one, similar charges, has been running for a year, and they're only a quarter of the way through the prosecution case so far. OK, Matt, there in the Hague. Thanks ever so much. Thank you.